How are you doing here? Well, nice background. I like that. Okay, but I uh, forgot to switch over to the right machine and boot to the right machine. Get down here on my KVM switch. This is how I do it, just in case you were just really wondering. I got it way up under there because it's really the only place, a good place I had to put it. And so I had to use a pencil to reach the. Uh, I have a brand new pencil that's never been sharpened because I didn't want it poking me all the time. And so I used that to uh, reach my plug. And I got my. Down in there in the dark, I've got my uh, SD card and the USB adapter. You can see the little blue light when it when it will start the AS Rock up. So I did a bunch of reading on the uh, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> on the um, Easy to Boot website, and I had uh, set out to try putting XP on there. Well, it didn't uh, didn't recognize the uh, SD card, so we'll take it out. I don't know to this still why it keeps doing that, but if you take it out and it'll re and put it back in there, it'll recognize it when it's running already like that. Control Alt Delete, and it'll reboot. So anyway, I was going to try to put my Windows XP uh, virtual machine on there because you can do that with Windows uh, Virtual. You can't use the VDI from VirtualBox, so it has to be a VHD. And a V or a VHDX, I think. Uh, maybe a couple other formats, but I, 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 I oh yeah, WIM WIM. And I, that look, that was that's WIM is the Windows proprietary format, so I figured that'd be harder to convert to. So I just, uh, decided I spent hours reading up on it, and in the meantime, I saw some things that I had forgotten or didn't notice. Um, anyway, I finally decided. That well, my file was too big. It was eight. My my original one was six point one gigabytes, and the one I have on my uh, Lenovo i five has grown to eight point six or something, uh, ma not megabytes, gigabytes. And I went ahead and tried it for straight or straight away because you can use VirtualBox to convert them. It's pretty cool, but it got an. And I was trying to send it straight to my the converted file straight to my uh, SD card on uh, in my USB adapter and it. It went for quite a while, and then it got, I guess, towards the end, and then it got an error saying too big, couldn't do it. And that might be because of my, uh, I'm guessing it might be because of my SD cards formatted FAT32. And although I know I've had bigger than um, all my, a lot of my, most a lot of my videos are three and a half gig, the ones that go of any time at all, and they're on there just fine. But and it's supposed to not do any bigger than three gig, but you know. I've seen a, a four gig, I believe, maybe I think I've seen six gig files on a thirty fat thirty two drives before, but with no problems. But eight gig didn't go for sure. And it could have been something in the program that just wouldn't let it do it. It didn't specify the you know, root of the error. So I'm gonna go in here to my Ender Virus menu. Anyway, while I was reading, I saw that it said, uh, you can't have any spaces or special characters, don't leave any uh dots, periods. The only dot you should have is at the end of the file name right before the extension. So, I thought, well, maybe that Komodo would have ran anyway. So I put it back in there and also made sure I renamed everything, renamed F-Secure to F-Secure. And uh, so I'm going to try Komodo, but I also found out that you need some, some uh, ISOs need, I'd seen that in a video, but I didn't catch on. It was moving pretty fast. Need special extensions. See, that's just straight dot ISO if you see down there in the yellow. Uh, down at the bottom, right in that area there. I don't know if you can see that. If you, if you had it, you'd see you could see it, but you do have to pay attention because with that background, it doesn't show up really well. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think Hirons might boot. Uh, well, it booted fine, but it didn't have it didn't boot properly. So it, I read it sometimes. That's I kind of got the idea that odd things like that may may happen when your file name is not come you know what will work with this system so uh, try Komodo again and you can hit that Y oh yeah it says use ISO ask oh I saw that okay so I'm gonna see if I can reboot because I don't think it may not work I just saw 
the thing one of the other things I was looking for maybe it won't lose my recognition the thing is it it should uh, it should stop and give you time to read I, I, if I can find a way to make that pause longer or just stop and wait because I don't remember if it's going if it's going on through I expect it to be standard and expected to work but it's actually telling you important things there that you need to read and respond to and in a hurry so oh I didn't <laughs> see I'm in, now I'm trying so hard I didn't even so hit Y it says and see you can't read it all either because it's not a, all, all the letters aren't showing up on the screen because it's not uh, fitted right but tip to avoid the okay uh, change file extension now I, I didn't realize this was you know real important a lot of that stuff doesn't you can just ignore it and just go with the defaults and usually with Linux stuff but this is actually not a Linux you know boot system it's kind of made for Windows you build it in Windows there's no Linux you know app to do it with so anyway so it's more along that mindset and I think like I'm used to Linux so anyway, uh, to avoid this prompt, do not use ISO as the file extension. Instead, use ISO default. I didn't ever really read this. Or set no SUG equals one in ISO might be E2 CFG. Okay, there's telling you something. But uh, type Y too quickly use ISO ask. Okay. So that's the ISO ask to help you find out what kind of extension it needs or help it find out and maybe it'll automatically do it. That's what I kind of gathered. Or you can just manually change your file extension. I did that with Hirons because it gave that as an example and told you just which one to use, which I had also seen that in that video and so it finally all clicked. And if you use ISO default, then I think maybe it'll just go to or whatever the system thinks it should go to without asking you okay so I did this before but and I just thought that was a way to you know I kept saying that's just a way in my other videos that's the way to get into these menus okay so that's what ask I ask is I guess it takes you to this menu and then you decide which one might make it work so uh, this is oh yeah this is that so it may never work then because I did all this before Boot is a typical ISO. Boot is a ISO but swap. Force it to boot even if Grafredo thinks it's unbootable. Okay. Into memory. I tried loading these into memory. I'll have to go down through it again as quick as I can because I don't remember what all it said. So there's a little, huge, little, huge learning curve with this thing. Uh, when it works, it works beautifully, but when it doesn't, you got a lot of reading to do. There is no end of the information. I mean, he tells you how to do it, but you just have to keep on reading on this website. And that easy to boot and the and the RM Prep USB website. I'm finally getting it down. RM Prep, not RPM. You better not say RPM. I'll get it backwards again. Okay, so the only thing I can I haven't tried that kept striking me when I was reading this before was that force an ISO to boot even if Grafredos thinks it won't. Which it's not stopping and saying can't boot it. It's trying to boot it and getting hung up. But let's try it anyway because I really don't see anything else. So not a single thing has worked today that I have tried. Not worked the way I wanted it to. Okay, inner graphic mode. I'm just going to let it count down and go. Because there's no more choices with it's graphic and text, and I've already tried them both. So it's starting to load, except for I did put that force it to try and boot. Menus look different from what I remember the last time. It's it's more into the oh now it's back like it was a small. I think maybe it uh, aired out. It went through that uh, screen where it hangs up, you know, trying to recognize things. 
and we get our single blinking cursor which you can let it sit there forever and it'll just keep on blinking so that's it there's a few times even recently when I got a blinking cursor it's usually a longer wider one of course that just may be the size of the text it gives it but and all of a sudden I think it's not going to work and I start to try to reboot it or shut it down and all of a sudden it starts booting but yeah so I guess that forced it past that uh, hang up but that's all it did so I don't think the Komodo will run and I believe we're completely locked up no no we rebooted okay well let's just see what we got here at least we weren't hung up because that makes me have to do double duty I have to hard shut it down and then boot it back up and it usually hangs up at that trying to go back into Windows and then I gotta move my USB stick and then reboot uh, control and delete again so when they don't work it's a real pain okay antivirus menu so I'll end up wanting to take out Komodo I've already used uh, F secure and all the rest of those EBA rescue I hope I have the versions that will work in there. Well, I, I was thinking maybe it's secure. I think it was one of the ones that had a dot in the name. Maybe it would work now. But there was a dot and a space and a thing in Komodo, and I took all that out, and it didn't make any difference. Back to main menu. Utilities. Let's see. Yeah, Linux. Okay, I think I added something in here. Fedora. I tried to install in Clam AV and Fedora Security. I could have tried it and just made comp is Fedora 24. Uh, yeah, Fedora 24. Actually, it might be more likely to work in there because it, it's running in Mate. Could have been something to do with LXDE, uh, FC, XFCE, the one didn't work. Let's see, SMS, Live CD. That's the other one that I was hoping would work, and I, I'd realized it had some different you know characters in it, so let's try it. Uh, Let's see. Why? What does it want to do? ISO ask. So it's just going to go to there. Hmm. I don't know. I don't remember. Forcing it didn't do anything. But let's do that again anyway. Just for grants. So I really don't think that. I've looked through this a lot. So I didn't see anything that looked like it's going to make it work. Okay. Copy to RAM. You can do that from in there on this one. <coughs> Cluster Master Mem Test SMS VGA. Hmm. Let's try VGA because I am running this on VGA. What, what does it say what that's supposed to mean? Yeah, VGA normal for booting older machines. Well, I didn't have weird VGA behavior, but I haven't tried it yet either, so try it but I am using the VGA cable to my monitor this monitor will do either one uh, DVI or VGA but I'm using VGA that's what my uh, switch has the only thing it has on it's VGA my KVM switch can't yeah fail error same thing Let's see if I can type reboot in there I didn't already try that Oh, the keyboard's not doing anything. So I don't imagine the control of the legal work either. Okay, well, I'm going to stop the video here. And I guess I will come back and try Fedora 24 again because its name was changed too. But that's, I think that's about all I got left. All right.